All right, guys, welcome to another episode in the TMJ show. Today is episode number four, and we are talking all about how residents study. Let's get into it. All right, guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. If you're new to this channel, if you're new to the podcast, my name is Lux. I am currently an internal medicine resident. I've been doing the MD Journey to help people just like you on their medical journey, but doing it obviously with less stress. So if you're listening to a podcast and you enjoy the content of this channel, uh, make sure obviously you subscribe and then leave a feedback on iTunes or Spotify or Google Podcast um, to be entered in our weekly giveaway for either an ebook or as well as a course. And if you're doing this on YouTube and you're watching the video version, then obviously make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, um, and leave a comment um, down below to also be entered in that weekly giveaway. As long as you enter once, you're always entered for future drawings, so make sure um, you make that a priority. But let's get into today's episode, which is how in the world do doctors even study? How does a resident physician like myself find the time to study. We'll be completely honest, you know, there's three main things that kind of get in the way from finding time to study. And number one is that time is limited. You know, you have long hours, you know, my ICU rotations can go from as early to five o'clock in the morning and end as late as seven or 9 p.m. And as I am a second and third year resident, sometimes that's gonna transform into 28 hour shifts. So obviously time is limited, you have to be very smart. Number two is that you have to be efficient. You know, you can't sit down for hours um, in residency um, as a physician to study for things because not only do you have your obligations as a resident, but then you have your daily obligations as either a family person um, or, you know, to your household, um, managing other chores that you otherwise wouldn't have time for. So that obviously gets in the way. And finally, number three is that you simply can't learn everything. There's always something more to learn. So you have to be really smart on what you learn, what you focus your time on. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the different ways, um, and it really is a variety of different techniques that I use to study in residency. And if you're not using one of these resources or techniques, then maybe you can give them a shot. Before we get started, I just wanna mention that today's episode of the TMJ Show is brought to you by my nine part study course, which teaches you all about the most efficient method that I had in medical school to really cut my studying down by 50%. So if you're struggling on how to study and you want a free approach, a step-by-step -step approach, then go ahead and check out the link in the show notes or the description of the YouTube channel, whatever um, you're watching um, this current episode on. But let's get into it. So one of the first things I love doing on a daily basis, because it just works naturally with my flow, is I typically have a separate paper for all of the patients that I'm taking care of. This is usually a paper that I create for the to-do list um, to make sure that all the patients are accounted for. Uh, and this is separate from like the individual paper that I'll write like their labs and stuff on. But on the same paper that I have my daily to-dos for all of my patients, on the back, I tend to write everything I've learned that day, whether it may be a different dose of a medication, um, something I've been taught through a lecture, um, like a really quick um, curbside lecture by a consult or something of that sort. But on the very corner, typically on the right side, I usually start to have a checkbox of all the topics, whether it may be a disease, a medication, just a concept in general that somebody may have mentioned offhandedly that I just don't understand. And during any downtime, I may quickly go to resources like Up to Date and Google and make sure that I kind of start checking them off. Anything that I have left, I come home really quickly, or you know, when I'm in my car uh, after I'm driving, I park. I take maybe another five minutes and just quickly look those up so I can have some closure to my day. Now, obviously, some of them are really quick, such as like, what does this medication do? How does it work? I'm like, okay, like that's how that works. Done. Now, obviously, there's going to be things that are going to be a little bit more time intensive and more conceptual topics. That's okay. Get through as much as you can every single day, and if anything, you can just continue to roll that list the next day and then the first thing they're going to look on the next day is whatever was left from the day before this way you're always kind of moving the needle forward in terms of your medical knowledge now the second thing that i do to really study is i have a notebook as you guys can see here on this table that's always in my backpack and usually in my white coat but these are notes that i will write typically during like a noon conference or a morning teaching session by one of my attendings and one of the things obviously I'll do is I'll make notes as if I was a medical student um, and highlight and star the things that are important. Um, this way I can easily kind of refer back to them. Um, and at the very top of the page, I'll write the topic that that lecture was over. The other bonus tip that I want to give is the day that you're writing the new notes, you know, let's say you're learning about hyponatremia. You may have a whole page that you write based off the lecture you're being given. Go ahead and take a second after you, before you close the page, 
to go ahead and look at the lecture from the day before. That way I'm always kind of feeling like the thing I've learned before hasn't just kind of remained on paper, but it's actually being solidified in my head. So I go ahead and take notes day on a daily basis, but next time I'm gonna take notes on something, another topic, I make sure that I take maybe just like a few seconds to remind myself what I had learned from that previous lecture. Now, the next few things are kind of resources that you can use online. Uh, my favorite resource to use is the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm subscribed to, obviously, um, their weekly um, journals as well as access online. So they have a few resources that you can use. One, you can just do their interactive cases, um, which will go through very high yield topics like hyponatremia, um, other vitamin deficiencies, um, things like anemia, and really walk you through a patient case, their labs, and help you understand how to parse through a different piece of material to come to the final diagnosis, and then I'll teach you about the final diagnosis. And these are included if you have um, a subscription to the New England Journal. Um, a lot of institutions provide it, so make sure you guys check that out in the link in the description. And there's two more things that I really enjoy using New England Journal for. One is their weekly case report that comes out and really can walk you through a very intriguing and challenging case to see what type of thing and diagnoses come to mind, how you parse through different pieces of information on a history, a physical exam, as well as labs to really make you a better clinician. You know, I do just one of these a week makes me feel a lot smarter, probably a lot more smarter than I actually am, um, but really, again, keeps the needle flowing. And then one more thing is that you can use a resource called NEGM Knowledge, um, or also I think it's called IM Reviews. It's basically an app that you can use on your iPad, obviously you can do it on your laptop as well, with different practice questions for both an ambulatory as well as an inpatient setting, particularly for people in um, internal medicine, but I'm sure there's other resources um, on a similar for my colleagues in surgery as well as other um, residency programs. So make sure you guys check those out. Again, those are basically a combination of interactive cases, weekly case reports, as well as practice questions given by the New England Journal of Medicine that I love doing whenever I have downtime to always keep my knowledge flowing. Now, the next way I study as a resident is through one of my favorite resources as a medical student, and that's through Online Med Ed. Um, they have a platform called CaseX, which is built for people who are intern um, as well as residents to really work on high yield diagnosis that have videos, that have practice questions, and I'll make a totally different video kind of showing you the, the internal workings of how that works, um, but there'll be a link down below um, if you guys wanna check it out. It is an affiliate link, so if you guys um, aren't interested, by all means, don't click it, or you can go to their website, but obviously I wouldn't recommend anything um, that I wouldn't use myself. So if you guys do wanna support the podcast and the channel, then go ahead and check out the link in the description. Now really two more ways that I study that seem to be a little bit more unorthodox or not really thought of as much. Um, number one is whenever I have a more conceptual topic, um, such as like ventilator settings or you know how to treat shock and the different medications to do it, things that I'll have to do in the ICU, I tend to go to my favorite resource to making content and go to YouTube. Usually there's a lot of different attendings and previous medical providers who have taught about the topic. One of the YouTube channels that I love watching that um, I'm happy to give a shout out to is MedCrams. You guys can check them out. Absolutely free videos that just kind of blows um, high yield information out of the water and I love using them even as a resident. And the last thing is something that I've started to do more and more as my first year of residency is starting to get to the halfway point and that is just working on teaching. Sometimes I find that the best ways that I learn things as a physician is knowing that I have a medical student to try to teach. And so simply I ask them like, what do you want to learn today? And they may tell me, oh, I want to learn about AFib or I want to learn about asthma or I want to learn about leukemia. And then usually one of those topics will scare me. It's like, well, I actually don't understand leukemia as well as I thought I did. Um, and so either the evening before or the morning while they're looking at their patients or presenting, I'll just quickly come up with like a five minute presentation that I can give them on the board that's gonna help solidify both my learning as well as theirs. And that really has helped me learn in uh, residency without feeling like I'm actually studying. But those guys are the multiple ways I study on a daily basis as a physician. Now obviously I'm gonna find re more resources, but if you have some suggestions, make sure you drop them down below in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on a podcast form, again, help with this podcast podcast grow. We are only on episode number four, but thank you so much for all of you guys that have left some form of a review and feedback already. And remember, if you leave some form of feedback on iTunes, Google Podcast, as well as Spotify, then you'll be entered for a weekly giveaway to get a free book as well as a, a video course of your choice. So make sure you leave some feedback to help this channel, the podcast grow, and then in return, you know, we can get you hooked up um, with an amazing
amazing resource. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening. Again, remember, if you are interested in learning how to study better, then in the show notes, you will have a nine-step free video course on how I studied in medical school, and hopefully that helps some of you guys out. If you're watching this on YouTube and you somehow still haven't managed to hit that like button, then go ahead and smash it, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, my friends.